Good morning, everybody. Masechet Sores, Dafyud Beis, Omud Beis, in the Mishnah, in the middle of the wide lines. Kohen Godol Poirem. We said yesterday that there are really <clears throat> four types of special Kohanim. What does that mean? We have the Kohen Godol that has Shema and Mishra on his head, or had it. In other words, it was inaugurated by being anointed. Then you have the Kohen Godol. Once they stored the Shemana Mishcha, Shemana Mishcha basically was not in use anymore from the times of Yoshiau, excuse me, Yoshiau. And then at that point, the Kohen Godel would only have the extra Godim, the eight Godim, the garments. Then there is another Kohen, which would be the substitute that stayed, yeah, stayed and remained as a Kohen Godel, <clears throat> right? And we also have a coin called Kohen Mashuach Milchomo. He's anointed, but he's not a Kohen Godol. He's meant to uh, go to war with the people and give them the pep talk, tell them, you know, not to be afraid of the Goim in three different ways. V'chule, v'chule, that's all. These are the four different types, and we discussed each one. Excuse me. Yeah, he's near Gaza. I hope they don't start up north also. This year is Lilu Nishmas of Imer Menachem Ben Akiva, Lilu Nishmas Tzila Bas Ben Zion, Saul Bas Moshe, and La Tzolas Klal Yisrael. May this be the final war before Mashiach and should stop today. Mashiach should come quickly. One of the things we mentioned before was that the Kohen Godol does not show any demonstration of Avelus. It doesn't show Bechlal that he's an Ovel, he's no Alochas of Avelus, he keeps working in Besamikdash, even as an Oinen, even when it's the, the, the death is very fresh, the first day before the burial, he still has to work. Now, the other thing is, he does not do any Priya Uprima, does not grow his hair long, and he doesn't tear his clothes, the Kriya that we, the people do when they're availing, okay? So the Kohen Godel doesn't do that. Now, I'll tell you a funny childhood memory. When I was a child, I used to take a shower, and I also take showers today, eh? and the shampoo would say, in the, on the shampoo box or bottle, it would say, sabon le lo sabon, uh, the soapless soap. And I always was like amazed, what does it mean? If it's soap, how come it doesn't have soap? Like, is it soap or isn't it soap? What do you mean the sabon le lo sabon, soapless soap? I don't know. Still, I'm not sure what that means today. In any event, in our Mishnah, we're going to now search for something also paradoxical. We're looking now for Kriya without Kriya. What does that mean? The Kohen Godol is not allowed to be Korea, his clothes. He's not supposed to share his clothes because he's a Kohen Godol. He's above a Avelus, he's something else. It says, God of Lo, Lo Ifo, it says in the Torah. On the other hand, he should show respect to his parents and do Kriya. So he's supposed to do Kriya, which is halachically not Kriya, a demonstration of sorrow that does not fall into the halachi category of Kriya. Get that? In other words, it's supposed to do something that's equivalent to Kriya, but is not. So if something is called halachically Kriya, the Kohen Godel shouldn't do it, and vice versa. That's just an introduction, which will help us tremendously to understand the Mishnah. Says the Mishnah, finally, let's go already. Says the Mishnah, Kohen Godel poirem mi lemata. Kohen Godel is supposed to be poirem, to tear the garment from the bottom part of the garment. Well, that means we're going to see in the Gemara. Mechlokes al v'shmuel. V'ahediot mi lemala. The coin hediot tears from the top of his clothes. In other words, like we do, he tears it, you know, let's say he wears like a, if it's a t-shirt, he tears the collar. He tears the actual collar. The collar is the part that's supposed to be torn. Yeah, in other words, the upper part of the garment is torn and leaves a, a tear right from the top. The lemata of the coin godol means it's halachically not called kriya. Kohen Godol, let's continue, the mission continues. Kohen Godol makriv oinen. Kohen Godol keeps the show going and he brings Korbonus even when he is an oinen, even when he's, you know, the first day of the Ptira. Veloi oichel, he does not eat the Korbonus of the Aninus, he only works. The hediot lo makriv oichel. The hediot, the regular coin, does not do anything when he's an oinen. It's actually forbidden for him to do that. <clears throat> it's possible, it's wrong. And the coin, which is makriv oinen, is uh, is a coin hediot, and he also does not is not makrivoinen, and he doesn't eat, and it's even uh, as far as I remember, it's chayv misa also. He's, he's uh, liable to death. Omarav. Now, what does that mean that the coin godol does kriya underneath? What does underneath mean? And also, it has to be such a kriya underneath that is 
halachically not called a kriya, otherwise he'd be in trouble because he's not supposed to do a kriya. Says the Gemara, Omar Av, Mechlokes Av Shmuel, Lemata Lemata Mamish, Lemala Lemala Mamish. In other words, when we say that the Kohen Godel does a kriya Lemata, that is to say, he does it in the lower part of the garment. You know that people back then, by the way, he would not be, he would not tear the actual big kehuna. He's not allowed to tear big kehuna. He would wear regular clothes. Yeah, he can wear regular clothes outside Beis Hamikdash. When he leaves Beis Hamikdash, and surely when he leaves Yerushalayim, he's not supposed to wear the big dekehuna. If you meet a Kohen Godel, uh, you know, down the street in Bishemesh, he's not supposed to wear his big dekehuna. It's not so simple he's allowed to leave Yerushalayim as it is, but even if yes, he, can, he shouldn't wear his Godim uh, of Kohen. In any event, so the Kohen Godel wears like a long garment, like some kind of cloak. Where, which part should he tear? Lamata Mamish, the bottom part of the cloak near the feet, let's say. And Lamala is Lamala Mamish, and the Kohen Hediot, which does regular Kriya, is the top, the collar, or yeah, like people have the Minag, but uh, where, where the buttons are. But this is the real upper part where where the hem is, where the, the upper border, so to speak, of the garment is. That's where you should do the Kriya. Okay, that's Rav. Well, Shmuel, Omar, Shmuel says, no, that's not good enough. Lemata, Lemata Mikame Sofo. Lemata means, I just can't show it on myself, I'm too superstitious for that. Lemata doesn't mean completely all the way in the bottom. Lemata means near the collar, but underneath in a tear that doesn't tear the hem. It doesn't tear the border of the cloth, it's a tear inside the, the shirt. Let's say this cup, yeah, this cup is an Avela, Miskina. Yeah, the cup is the shirt, so the coin had it to tear over here by the rim, by the border. According to Shmuel, the coin Godel would tear here, you get me? A little bit under the top, in a way that doesn't affect the actual frame, so to speak, of the baguette. It's just an internal tear, yeah, like internal tear over here, which is below the very top. Okay, I'm sorry, Jeffrey, I apologize. Yeah, but you, you, you understand me? Yeah? One minute. So that's Rabbi Shmuel, that's the Mechloikis. In other words, yeah, let me just finish the sentence. Lemala, lemala makami sofa. Lemala means the top of the safa, of the hem, of the border. And when end, the, yeah. Yeah, vizeh, vizeh, but Both of them have to be by the neck, in the neck area. So again, everyone agrees that a coin had yet tears regular, like a valium. I think everyone in this room was an oval once in their life, as far as I know, yeah. You do it in the top part. The Kohen Godel, that's the Mechloikis. The Kohen Godel, according to Rav, tears all the way in the bottom by the feet. According to Shmuel, no. When the Mishnah said the bottom doesn't mean all the way ground zero. It means he, he tears not the very top, but one level below the top, around the chest area, okay? It's just a tear, yeah, that's there, but doesn't affect the whole sura of the clothes. In other words, Shmuel probably believes, the way I understand it, that the Kohen Godel should show more of a Chosh of a Kriya. In other words, the Kriya shouldn't be so insignificant. The Kriya should be somewhere where everybody can see, but a bit lower in a way that doesn't really destroy the Begid as much. That's generally what's going on over here. Yes, you okay? That, that, that answered you? May CV. Now we're asking a question from the... The Gemara in Moed Cotton, that's where all the Gemara sort of avails. Question, Mesivi. I'll call a Mesim Kulon. The prices over there in Moed Cotton differentiate between avails over other people and parents. We all know that there are many differences, right? That's one month, and that's a whole year. Bechule. I'll call a Mesim Kulon, a person that's Ovel over any other dead person, brother, sister, whatever. A regular person, yeah, if one tears over his brother, he can either do Kriya Kami Sofa Shaloi, which is the top, if he wants, he does not have to be Mavdil, to separate, meaning to properly tear the entire form of it by tearing the collar and tearing the, the, the whole frame. He doesn't have to. In other words, either or is good. But by the parents, you have to. But the parents, you have to do such a career, which is duch and duch, a career that starts from the top and goes, you know, you know, a few inches underneath, that has to be proper kriya, where the collar is torn, or the, the, the hem, the, the buttons area by us. There has to be proper kriya. But in any event, we do see that a kriya of the brother or sister or son, daughter, that kriya, what about it? That kriya, 
is halachi kriya, and yet how is it done? Not the top. The kriya, which is a little bit below the top, is the halachi kriya. That's not good for us. Remember what we said, the soapless soap? We're looking for kriya without kriya. As the Gemara says, kevan de be'al mahavi kera, if usually that's called a kera, when one brother dies, let's say chlila, then we say that he can do kriya, which is not the very top, and does not it does not ruin the whole shit, and yet it's called a kriya. You're doing the proper thing, and Hebra Kadisha will be happy with you. Excuse my humor. Then Karikan God of Loifoim. If so, if it's a kriya, that's bad because it says in the Teire God of Loifoim. It says that his clothes should not be torn, and that is a halachic tear. So what, what's going on over here? It's too good. <laughs> this feels so good. A coin Godel shouldn't do it. It's halachically okay, which means for a coin Godel's halachically not okay. Answers the Talmud responds now. Shmuel Shmuel holds like a different Tana called Abuda. What did we say though? Mal Kol Kera Shenu Abuda believes that any Kera, any tear that doesn't really have. Uh, that is not separate, enu mavdil, that does not ruin the shape of the hem, of the, the corner, or whatever you want to call it, the, the rim of the beged, is not called kera shotiflus, it's a nonsensical kera, it's a shtus kera, it's nothing, it, it doesn't help halachically, which means Rabbi believes, be it brother, sister, son, daughter, chas sholem, any kind of ovel, you have to do proper kera, tear the collar itself, very good, Mimele Shmuel says, that since the kera, which doesn't affect the collar, is not a good kera, but the Kongodol, that's what we're looking for. It's something symbolic to show Tsar, yeah, and he should do it to show how Tsar is for his brother or whatever, father, mother. But on the other hand, it's not called Alachik kera. It's like sitting Shiva without sitting Shiva, without fulfilling the Alochus. Very nice. Frag the Gemara, that's what you're saying. Okay, you can ask a question quickly now. Yes. According to Rabbi Yudha, a kera, a tear, that does not actually affect the shape of the baguette, yeah, if this cup, yeah, over here, is not torn on the top, it's torn in the middle, for a cup that's not good, the water's going to spill out, yeah, but if you have a garment that just has a local tear in the middle, the tear didn't affect the outside general shape of the baguette, according to Rebuda, zero, gurnished, mitnished, yeah, why? Because Rebuda believes that's not called a good care, good enough, not even brother and sister. Mimele Shmuel says, voila, I like Rebuda, says Shmuel, and I say, like Rebuda, since this is not a good tear for regular people, People, Mimela for the Kongodal, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the Kongodal to show some kind of sorrow, remorse about his parents uh, dying. On the other hand, it should not be Halachic Kera, because it says in the Torah HaKedosha, Lo Yifum, God of Lo Yifum, we should not tear his clothes Halachically. Yeah. Uh, okay. Quick one. Yeah. Well, you know, let's hear the questions in literally a few lines. We're finishing this issue, it's not big, and then I can hear questions. Frek the Helegegemure, you just quoted Rabiuda regarding a Velus? Are you joking with me? Umi Isla Rabiuda Kriya Bekon Godol? Does Rabiuda believe that a Kon Godol has any type of Kriya? You're telling me I hold a Rabiuda and therefore the Kon Godol should do Kriya, class B kind of Kriya. Rabiuda doesn't believe there is any Kriya in Kon Godol. Well, Tanya, look at the Bryce, it says, Elon, very interesting drosh here. Elonema Roish Lo Yifra, Ubeged Lo Yifroim, which means the Torah says, Roishoi Lo Yifra, he should not let his hair go, his head be parua, have, you know, like a fallen hair, like a long hair. Ubgod Dov, his begodim, his garments, his clothes, he should not tear. He doesn't say that, let's say the Torah would have missed the his. Just say, don't grow your hair, don't grow the head and the baguette without his. Why does it have to say his? Of course it's his and nobody else's. Why did you have to say his this and his that? Says the no. You know what I would have said? Haisi Oimer, I would have said something very interesting. Wow. 
the sotat, a woman that we know her story comes to Beis Hamikdash. You have to uncover her hair. That's by the way the core for Kisu Rosh. Women have to cover their hair because the sotat they would uncover her hair at the Beis Hamikdash, and also he would hold her clothes in a way that sometimes it would get torn. The top of her, the tall story, they would hold it with a chevel, with a the, like her part of her shoulders maybe would be exposed to show um, nivlus that she's being uh, disgraced. In any event. The woman, who does that? The koyen. So the koyen uncovers her partially, yeah? And Mimela would have thought, if it says roish loif or beged loif, I would say that maybe a koyen who's an ovel doesn't do it to the sota. If it doesn't say his rosh and his garment, I would say it means someone else's head, someone else's garment. You know who the sota, because that's what's done to her. Maybe to show a veil, so maybe she's supposed to be like an veil, I don't know. But I would say he doesn't do it to her. Talmud loimar is roi shoi lo yifra. Ubgadov lo yifroim. His, 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 his. Which means she ain't the priya prima call ikar di rabi yuda. Rabi yuda says that's what it comes to tell me, categorically, to tell me that the current godel does not do any kriya and any priya, prima, nothing. Yeah, prima palace. He doesn't do any kind of. Of anything to do with the veilus, not for him, not for others, bechlal not, not second class, no kriya, nada. That's Rabiuda. No, so you see, Rabiuda believes that really Kohen Godel has no kriya bechlal, right? Okay, so why is Shmuel quoting Rabiuda? Well, Shmuel is talking according to the Tanit that does believe in kriya of Kohen Godel, class B. Eh? Now continues the Brisa, just in order to finish off the Brisa. Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, ain't a poem, kidech shemnei odom poem, mean. Yeah, he does not tear like regular people do when they're over. Ela bat who milamata led you milamala. That's a nice mainstream opinion. The coin godol tears underneath, whatever that means, and the coin edio tears regular the top of the collar. In any event, Shmuel is now talking one time like Rabbi Yuda, and on the other hand, he's not like Rabbi Yuda. So what's going on? And says the Gemara, like we had yesterday, Shmuel Savol Akabiuda Bechada Upol Galei Bechada. Shmuel doesn't really owe anything to Rabiuda, didn't marry his daughter. Shmuel believes Rabiuda on one thing and argues on the other thing. Let's summarize. Shmuel believes uh, Rabiuda or holds like Rabiuda. Shmuel supports Rabiuda, in which case, regular Kriya. Regular Kriya of regular Joe Shmo Israel is not a coin, not a coin God or a coin idiot. Those people, when they do Kriya, Shmuel believes that, according to Rabbi that a Kriya which is under the collar, even one centimeter under the collar, is not called Kriya. Mimela says, Shmuel, ah, good, I found a Kriya which is not a Kriya. Hey, let's attach it to coin God. Whatever is not good for the regular Joe Shmo is good for coin God. That's one thing. Now, it's true the Rabbi the holds that a coin God doesn't tear. So what? There, there is no collision here logically. It's everything very everything is very good. Rabiuda says local in Khan Godel's no Kriya Bakhlaw. Thank you, Rabiuda. In this, I don't hold like you. I hold the Khan Godel has Kriya. What class B Kriya? The second class Kriya. What's called second class Kriya? I'll take from Rabiuda's opinion regarding regular people. Whatever the regular person is called not a Kriya, is not called Kriya. For the Khan Godel, which I Shmuel believe, like Rabbi Shmuel, I believe there's Kriya as class B. This is class B. Because it's not good for regular people. Everything is super, super logical and great. Oh, Hosemis. Ah, beautiful. Getting ready for Shavuot. And we continue the next Mishnah. No, we have a question from the Peanut Gallery commercials. Says Eilige Mishnah, famous Mishnah. Call next Mishnah. The next Mishnah almost, yeah, we're getting to the end of yesterday's Amut. <laughs> Says the Mishnah, Kol Atodil Mechaveiroi, Koidem Eschaveiroi. Whichever one is todir, any mitzvah which is more frequent than the other takes precedence. Yeah, in other words, we know that from the korbanas, which we'll see later on, when you have two mitzvahs, one of them takes place every day, let's say, the other one takes uh, place once a week. The one that takes place every day, the one who's the daily mitzvah, comes before the, let's say, weekly or annual mitzvah. Whoever is holier than this friend, holier than now, whoever is holier than this friend, the other one, 
takes precedence over the other one. Yeah, Let's say it's a busy day in Beis Hamikdash, and now you're a Koyin, and you have two poem, you have two bulls to bring into the Kodesh. One of them is Par Mashiach, the bull brought by the Kohen Godel. The Kohen Godel made some wrong ruling for himself, and also Par Eida stands there. They're both standing in line. They didn't take the ticket like in Pagi. They don't have the, the number, you know, when you wait by the... With the queue, yeah, they come together, both Koyen and the and the Sanhedrin. They both have to bring the par. Which one comes first? Says the Mishnah, para Mashiach, kodem la par the bechol masov. The par Mashiach, the par of the Kohen Godol, even though it's just one persona, that par Mashiach, you say, please, sir, please move forwards, and he's escorted. He can do it himself, by the way. He goes and he does the he or his representative. They do the par of Kohen Mashiach before the par of the entire nation, and we're going to see why. Bechol Masov, in the entire process. Says the Gemara, Minani Mili, how do you know that Kol Todim Mechaveroi is Koidem? Yeah, how do you know? Says the Gemara, Omar Abayi, Abayi brings the source, the Omar Ko, says in the Postuk, Milvad Oilasa Boiker, Asher Lo Oilasa Tomid. When he talks about the Korban Musaf, it says about Musaf, you bring it besides Oilasa Boiker, the morning Oila, which is an Oilasa Tomid. Now, you definitely have a, an extra few words here. As the Gemara says, Michdi Siv Oila Saboiker. It says already that Oila Saboiker, the morning Ola, was brought first. It was brought. Oila Satomid Lamali. Why do you have to say it's Oila Satomid? Every child knows, and it says in other places in the Torah, that the morning Oila is Oila Satomid. So why do you have to mention it again? I know it's Oila Satomid. Just say, you bring, you, there's an Oila of the morning and Musaf. What is Oila Satomid? And says the Gemara, Achiko Mochmono. That's what the Torah means. Called the Tadira Kodmo. Every Korban, the, the reason why the Korban Tomid comes first is because he is Tomid. We have to mention the Tomid kite. We have to mention the Tomid quality that it has. Get me? Oil as a boiker comes first, not by chance. It comes first, always, essentially first, because it's always hot Tamid. What does Tamid mean? Always. Right? Because it comes frequently every day, that's why it should always be that way, and it's not just, you know, a man, it's not just mentioned, you know, by, by chance. It's Bedafka, a general rule for Kol Kula, that Tomid comes first, and the same goes for Tfila, many other mitzvahs. Whoever is holier comes first. How do you know that the holy item or the holy person or the holy holy whatever comes before the other one? The Tana Devel Bishmoel, it says in Bishmoel's Braisa, the Kidashtoi, we're talking here about the Koyanim. We're talking about the Kohanim, the Kiddashtoi. What's the Kiddashtoi? It says, make the Kohen holy. Well, he's holy already. What do you mean Kiddashtoi? Make him Choshuv. Lechol Dovel Sheba Kedusha. Anything to do with Kedusha, you have to actually make the Kohen go first, give the Kohen precedence, give the Kohen the, the honor to always go first. Liftoyach Rishoin. To Liftach Rishon means to either read the Torah first, as we all know, the coin always gets first, whether whatever the coin is, he gets first. And by the way, Rashi in a different place says Liftach Rishon means that in case of, uh, let's say there's a rally, let's say there's an Atzeres, some kind of either Sheva Brochus or uh, any kind of gathering of Rabonim that get together, the coin should always speak first. The coin should be the first one to uh, to talk to address the public. So liftoch rishon should be the first one. Well, levorech rishon to bench first. We know that if you have a few male guests at the table, the coin goes first, zimun wise. Yeah, levorech rishon, and also, but another pshat says to make a moitzi. Interesting. We have a few people together. We don't know who should make a moitzi. The coin should make a moitzi. The little money off for rishon, and also to take the nicest portion. You should give the coin the nice portion, the best, uh, fattest uh, piece of steak or chicken. Give it to the coin. I mean, it's not kedusha, but you are mikdashim. You're machshivim. You make him important also by physical things. We're starting today's amud. You hoo hoo hoo. Par coin meshuach upar eda. Okay, what did we say? Now we're going to have a whole list of. You know who comes before the other? We even have a chart. I hope it will be online today. I'm not managing so well with the charts now, but Imir Hashem, the chart will be on. But before the chart, first let's learn it. A quick round of questions now. Yes. Uh, just, uh, 
Minahanimili, how do you know that a par Kohen Mashiach, one person, the par of the Kohen Mashiach, he takes precedent over and his Corbin is brought first, he jumps, doesn't jump the queue. We we let him jump, we let him go first before the Kohen of the entire nation of the Bezdin. Minahanimili, how do you know? The Tono Abonon, the Sof Oisoika, Shel Sof is Sapahari Shoin. The Torah says, when the Torah talks about, um, the the korbanos right are four types of chatois right the base din which is the am the koyen the nosi and the regular guy so now the par koyen mashiach the koyen is actually written first in the torah the par of the koyen godel is mentioned the first one of the four and then it says regarding the par of the base din you do to it like the Rishon, like you did to the first one again the word Rishon is extra because we know that the one before is first Right? In other words, two people sitting in a restaurant. One of them wants Coke, right? The other one can say, I want like him. It doesn't have to say, I want like the first one. We know the first is first. It's redundant. Say like this. Why like the first? Why Rishon? What's his extra word? The Rishon, which is a power of the Kohen Mashiach, should always be the first one before the Paraeda, always forever. That's the Pshat of the Posuk. If you want reasons and philosophy, here it comes. Tono Bonon, the other bride gives us a logical reason. The Kohen Mashiach stands with his bull in front of the Kodesh. The Para Eida, with the 71 people, they're standing there also, they're both waiting in line together. We are consistent. The Kohen Mashiach goes first. Why? Generally speaking, when you talk about the entire year, all year round, who is atoning for who? Who is Mechaper for who? The Kohen. The Kohanim, what do they do? They work in Beis Amikdash to serve there. And we, the Eida, the people, are being served by them. We are their clients, so to speak, to become Mechupal. And here we're talking about Kapar, about Korban. Dinu, it makes sense logically. Shiyakdim HaMechaper, La Miskaper. First of all, the one who's Mechaper, the one who's supposed to be Mechaper and, and atone for others and cleanse the other people, he should be clean before they are clean, right? Before you clean other people, clean yourself. As it says also in Yom Kippur, it says, what's the order of the kapar of the coin godol? First, Mechaper for himself, he does the video over the head of the first bull, then his household, and then the entire Israel, right? That's in the second one, that's already in the goat, yeah? The Klal Israel. So we see that first of all, the coin godol has to deal with his own issues, so to speak, and then the other people, because the base are representing the rest of the nation. The base are representing everybody else, they come after the coin godol. He is Mechaper, and they are being meat Kaper, by him. That's first. Now the second one. Now we're talking about the second level. Boom, boom. Let's say you have two bulls. Both of them are supposed to go into the inside of the Kodesh. Of the Kodesh. For one of them is a regular power of Beisdin because Beisdin ruled anything. Give me examples. Chelev, Dam, any chorus, Nida, right? They allowed all kinds of crisis by mistake. What do they bring? We all know, a par chatas. But what happens if they allow people by mistake to worship of a desire in a certain, uh, in a certain matzav? What do they bring? They bring two things. They bring par for oilo and the seir for chatas. What happens if both bulls are there standing, mu mu? One of them is for the regular sin. 99% of the sins, and one of them is Pal Oilo, not Chatos, which is brought for Vedas Kachovim. They allowed people to go to India and worship the golden thing because of something. Then the Alam Dovel Shotzibu is before the Avadizoro. My timer. Why is the regular general one before the one of the Zoro? Hi Chatos, hi Oilo. One of them is Chatos, and one is Oilo. And Chatos comes before Oilo. Chatos take precedence over Oilo. Vitania, it says in the Raisa. The Hikiv is Shishon Chatos, Rishoino. It says about the two birdie birds, about the two doves, right? The Shnei Torah, Mishnei Bnei Oino. It says, Hikiv is Shishon Chatos, Rishoino. The one that, the bird that comes and they come together in pairs over there, right? Let's say a person is poor, 
Right? Give you lettuce, zav, zechule. He brings two birds. Okay? One of them is chatas, the other one is oilo. And the chatas goes first. What are you telling me the first one? You want to tell me that the chatas is first? Right? To tell me that's the first and that's the second, it's super redundant. The first one, the Torah says first, and on the second one, it says second. That's terrible for the Torah. Right? The, this is the first, and this is what do you think it is? The 15th? Even I know, know how to count till two. You know, Rishon Shani. Why do you have to tell me both? Ela Zebono Av. It's coming to tell you general rule, Binyan Av, the prototype, a general, super general rule. Shukal Chutois Kodmas Lo Oilos Haboim Imohem. Any Chatas and Oilo that come together, the Chatas always comes before the Oilo. The Kaimalan, up to the point, listen to this. The Afilu Chatas, first wide line. The Afilu Chatas Oif Kodemis Loilos Behema. Let's say you have one person who brings Chatas Oif. And another person wants to bring an oil of behema. The oil is so little, cutie cute, and the behema is the biggest bull you've ever seen in your life. Which one comes first? The bird. Why? The bird here happens to be chatos, and yet the bull is a show of the power, is oil. Interesting, the Gemara doesn't say what Rashi says many times, and this is a lesson for life about human relationship. It says in Rashi a few times in the Chumash, Rashi says, why is it really that the Chatos comes before the Oilo? You know why? It says, Praklit Nichnas, the Doiron Acharav. First, the lawyer comes in, the defender lawyer comes in, the defender, and then the gift, which means you did something wrong, Mr. Honeycomb. You did something wrong. First of all, atone for it, chatos, pay, pay your, your debt, say you're sorry properly by, hey, you owe Hashem something. Well, what's the story of turning on the light on Shabbos because you thought it's Sunday? What kind of mistake is that? Bring chatos. Later on, you bring the sweets and the flowers and the chocolates, which is the oil. Oil is like a gift. Same thing in human relationship, you know, you you wronged someone, say sorry, like a man, and then give him a gift, and then, you know what I'm saying, then play, sometimes people think they can waffle things, you know, like they, you know, if I tell him a nice good morning, then he'll forgive me. No, first say sorry, deal with it, and then give him a big smile, good morning, and send him chocolates to his office. I'm saying, this is a lesson here, first atone, and then do the other nice things. Okay. One more, one more, and then we'll be more. We have to get into the momentum. Wide line. Par avodes kechovim, kodem leseir avodes kechovim. Aha, we're just breaking our own rule. Oy, vay, vay. It says in Avodah if Basin misled the people to think that you, they can worship a certain type of Avodah Zara a certain way, what do we say? They have to bring two kurbanas. It's a set of two. It's not either or. It comes as a set. They bring a par for oil. And the chatos, seal for chatos, and you know who comes first? Okay, the oil. After my whole talk about the chocolates in the office, who comes first? The pal comes oil, and then right after him, yeah, followed by seal of chatos. my, why? I chatos by oil. That's chatos and that's oil. You're confusing me. It should be the other way. Answers the Gemara. Amri be Marova mishmed rova bar Mari. In Marova, in Eretz Yisrael, they said be Shem rova bar Mari. Chatas avodes kachovim chesira Aleph. The word chatas. If you see the word chatas in the Torah regarding the particular chatas of the Dezora of the Tzibur, lechatas ksiv without Aleph. It's missing an Aleph on purpose, of course. Yeah, on purpose, meaning that lechatas misses an aleph to show that this chatas is missing something. It misses the the uh, privilege of being first. It's like a chatas minus, that the chatas has come second. Rove Omar, I'll hear you soon. Rove Omar, ke mishpat ksiv bey, nekuda. Ke mishpat ksiv bey, it says, do it like the mishpat, like the proper halacha prescribes in the, in, the, in the Torah, which means in the Torah, the par oil is mentioned first, and then the seer is lachatus. I would say, well, the Torah mentioned is that way, but it's not it's not uh, precisely always that way. It's not set in stone. Maybe sometimes the Torah talks about an order and in the Memochar. Kemishpa tells you, no, in this case, you have to do exactly the order written in the Torah by having the oil first and the chata second. Why? I don't know, but that's, that's an exception to the rule. One more. Seir avodes kachovim, kodem seir nosi. 
the seir of Vodas Kachovim, which is a public thing, is before the seir of the Melech. Two seirim are coming to Beis Hamikdash. One of the Zoro, whole business of the Tzibur, and one, Mr. Melech, king someone, may, he sinned and he wants to bring his male seir. Which one goes first? The people before the Melech. My time, eh? Why? Hai Tzibur Vayochid, with all respect to the Melech being a Melech, is just one individual. Since it's the, the, the Zohar Korban is brought on behalf of the entire Jewish nation, so to the Melech, and that they're the public, and the Melech is number two, because the Melech is one person, well, there are more people. Question time. Right. Okay. Fourth lines, the fourth wide line. Seir uh, Nosi. Yeah, line starts with the word Sibur. Sibur Vayochid. Seir Nosi Kodem Seiras Yochid. Now two people come. One of them is called Melech, and the other one is called Eli Melech. I'm joking. One of them is the king, and one of them is a regular guy. They bring the Seira. One, that's Seir, that's Seir, that's a Melech, that's Mr. Josh Mo. Well, which one's first? The Nosi, the Melech comes first, my time, eh? Hai Melech, thy idiot. Although the Tzibur, the entire nation, comes before the Melech, but it's one against one, the Melech takes over idiot, a regular person. Seir as Yochid, Kodemus Lekivs as Yochid. Wow, that's cool. Two people, of course, the names are Reuben Mishimen, like always. They're two regular guys, and they both turn on the light on Shabbos, and they're so sorry. One of them brings a she goat, and one of them brings a she, 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 a sheep, female sheep. Yeah, so then... Stop. It happens to be that way. What? Because both are kosher. A regular person for regular chatos brings what? Either she goat or sheep. So one of them has this. One has that. So funny. So cool. Which one comes first? They, they didn't take the, the the number in the bank. Which one comes first? Says the brisa. First of all, the seira, and then the kivsa. First of all, the goat, and then the sheep. Frag the Gemara. No, it says nishtazoi. The brisa says kivsa siyochid kodemis lasiyra siyochid. There's a brisa that says just the other way around, the reverse. It says no. First of all, the kivsa, and then the siyra. First the kivsa, and then the yeah. What's his name? The the sira, the the goat. You know, sometimes there are machlokes between the brises. Machlokes tanoim. Masova seira difa. One brise believes that seira, the goat, is a more important kind of species, korban wise. You know why? Shekeni sabta talavodes kachovim beyochid, because a seira has a mile, has an advantage when a person worships of a desara by mistake. By mistake, a person went to India and he didn't know of a desara, he didn't know it's also, I don't know, what he didn't know. And what happens then? What kind of korban does he bring? A she, goat only. A she goat or a sheep is only optional in any other chattas. But chattas of the Zohar is only she goat. Oh, so she she goat has chashivus. Look, it's a, there is one territory where only the she goat is brought. Therefore, when she goat and sheep come together and they're both fighting over the queue like people in the bank, so here too, the goat should be more chashu, should be brought first. Umar Sova, ah, what would the other opinion say? Umar Sova, Kipsa Adifa. The other one says, no, the, 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 the sheep, the Shepsala is more important. Why? Shekinisabta be Alia. Because the Alia, I'm not going to say the proper name in English because it's not a nice name, I know, but there is, Alia is a special tale that only sheep have and goats don't. The goats have like a, like a dog kind of tail, and the sheep have this like fat, a tail over somewhere, like, you know, lying down like that. The Ali is very, very tasty. The Ali is brought as part of the Imurim. So we see that the sheep has a kind of Imurim, one thing that goes up to the Mizbech, that the Seir doesn't have, right? The Imurim of Seir and the Imurim of, of the sheep, identical, except that the sheep has one item more than the goat, right? And therefore, we see that the sheep, according to him, is more important. So that's a question. He says about the Zara, he says Alia. I don't know what's the but you know, basically, it's a tie. Oimer, oh, Inyana de Oimer, the Omer, the Omer offering. Oimer, Koidim Lakevis Habo Imoi. 
Yeah, a few days ago we should have brought a korban oimer. Yeah, if we had this amikdash, oimer comes the korban oimer. We're not just minchas oimer from the barley, the second day of Pesach, and the oimer comes together with the keves. There's a special keves that comes with the oimer. The oimer comes, and then the keves that comes with it. First the Oimer, then the Kebis is Shechted. Oh, in a few days' time, let's hope it's going to happen. Beis HaMikdash. Shtealechem koibim lekvosim aboim imohem. There are shnei lechem, there are two, two loaves of bread, big square loaves of bread that are bought. The first ones from the Chita, to Beis HaMikdash. And also with them, you bring two sheep, two kvosim, which are shlomim, by the way. Public shlomim. Yeah? So first you bring the lechem and then the kvosim. Why? Zekla, that's the rule. Dova haba begin leyoim, the item that comes because of the day, oimer comes because that's the day. Second of Pesach is Omer day. Shvuas is the time to bring shtea lechem. They come before koindem the dova haba begin lechem. In other words, the other animals that come, the, the, the flesh animal comes only as a way to accompany the korban of the day, the mincha of the day. Get what I'm saying? Therefore, first comes the one of the day, which is the meal offering, the bread, or whatever. Then comes the, the flesh that comes with it, because that just, um, that's a way to accompany the main korban, which in this case is a mincha. Says the Mishnah. Ha'ish, there's a lot of duality in Shavuos, and by the way, why we eat uh, milk, why we eat dairy products in Shavuos in a few days' time, everybody knows the reason, because they didn't have the kosher food, and it's true. But uh, Ramo says another reason, because you're supposed to have two breads, one milky and one meaty, so to speak, one fleshy, one milky. That's why you're going to make sure that they're going to be completely separate, you're not supposed to have them together. Yeah, that's why. Why? Because shtei lechem, to represent the shtei lechem, to represent the two breads, shvuas, shnei luchas abris, shnei kvosim, shnei atzeres, yeah, it's nasa v'nishma, nasa v'nishma is all about shvuas. Says the Mishnah, ooh, I hope YouTube doesn't take me off the YouTube when we're going to say this now. Says the Mishnah, ha'ish koidem la'isha. Now we're going to talk about taking precedence, people. Up until now, we spoke about, you know, precedence about prioritizing korbonus. Now we see how we prioritize people regarding helping people, regarding taking them out of jail. Very big moral questions, you know? The guy drives down the lane, yeah, he's gonna hit either the baby or the old woman, who's gonna save, who's gonna die, Michem Yomus. All these terrible questions. Says the Mishnah. Let's say you can give Tzdoko, yeah, to Lachyos, to let a person live, help a person live, and it's either a man or a woman. You only have enough resources to help one person. The man comes first because he has more mitzvahs than the woman. The Maise, we help people because we want more mitzvahs to be fulfilled. Men have more mitzvahs than a woman, and therefore a man should be helped first, generally speaking. Yeah, you have enough time. You found two wallets, and you're about to fly to America, <laughs> and you can only give back one wallet, the one that looks masculine, give first before the one that looks feminine. Yeah, you don't have enough time, because generally men have more chashivus because we keep more mitzvahs, and therefore it should be helped, yeah? That... <laughs> The guy is very happy that his wife lost a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> happy that his wife lost a credit card. I hear. The Aisha Kodemis Laish Lexus Uloitzi Mibesa Shevi. A woman comes before a man, Lexus. Let's say he doesn't have clothes and she doesn't have clothes. Everything burnt. Everything was uh, the missile. I don't know. Uh, so not, both of them don't have what to wear. The woman comes first because it comes to Senius. The woman is first. Also to take away from captivity. Let's say Hamas. Hamas. The capture two people, a man and a woman, a soldier and a woman soldier. The woman goes out first. You should make sure to take the woman out of jail first because to her, they will abuse her. And we assume they will not abuse the men, not the same way. So woman, again, because of reason of Senius, should go out of jail or the Mexican mafia, whatever, before the men. Here says the mission exception to the rule. Let's say both of them can be mitkalkel. Let's say those people, the captures, they don't mind if it's a good boy or girl, they're very modern. 
yeah, they can also abuse the men as much as the woman. Then they need to take out the men first because it's more of a bizarre. For the men to be subject to Mishkav uh, Zachar against his will is worse than for the woman. Yeah, and therefore, in that case, you take out the men first. Any other abuse, both, the, you save the men first because for him that will be worse. That's what Rashi says in a different Masech that I remember, but I remember it clearly being said. What? The lo, who? Lot. Lot. Tono Abonon. Yeah. Says the Brisa. Hoyo, who? The Oviv, the Rabbi, Beshevi. A person was captured, yeah, was put under captivity by whoever, him, his father, and his Rebbe. Who goes first? Yeah, they have enough money. Let's say he has enough money. He can call people from jail, from the Mexican place, from the Hamas, somehow, to arrange that they should take someone out. Who called him Rabbi? They only have one million dollar or I don't know, thousand terrorists, whatever it takes, for one person. Who called him Rabbi? He goes first. That's always the rule. When it's as much as you are supposed to love the other and care about the other people, you go first, even before your Rebbe. The rabbi called him Lo'oviv. Let's say there's now enough money to take out one, either the rov or the father. The rov goes first. Why? But not any rov. Your rav, the one who brought you to Olam Habo, well, your father brought you to Olam Hazeh. This is a Mishnah in uh, Elam Etzias, yeah, and that is my father, Elam always used to tell us. The rabbi comes before the father, he brought you to Olam Habo, and the father only to Olam Hazeh. Imoy, let's say the mother is there too. Aganza Mishmacha were captured together. Father, mother, Rebbe, son, Holy Ghost, yeah. Imoy, the mother is there too. Kodemis Lekulam. The mother comes before everybody. Why? It's Kibud Aim and more of a Bizoin. They're going to, Lola and Khalila, rape the mother and not the Rebbe and not the people. Let's assume that's a story. And it's Kibud Aim. Get the mother quick. Before anybody else, there's a question that the mother comes before him, or not before the person himself, but that's not so clear. Now let's say the family is out, there are two people in captivity, or two people who need money, or two people who need uh, whatever, or, or you need to save their lives. The Chacham is before Melech Yisrael. The Chacham, you have a Chosh with Talmud Chacham, a person where everybody agrees with Talmud Chacham, and you have the Jewish king, which may not be a Talmud Chochom. So we say the Chochom goes first, the scholar. The Talmud Chochom goes before Melech Yisrael. Wow, why? Chochom Shemais, Ein Lanu Kayoitz Boy. When Chochom dies, there's no way to replace him. When Rabbi Moshe died, people said we're mamish like orphans. In other words, when people, when a Chochom dies, even if you have other Chochomim, they're never going to take his space, his place, the special qualities he had and what he gave the Jewish nation. Melech Yisrael Shemais, a Melech Yisrael who died, Kol Yisrael Ruim Lamalchus, anybody can be a king. Yeah, which means it's true that only people from the Davidic dynasty, but conceptually a Melech is not somebody special. He's just the son of a king and he's a nice guy, that's all. It's something hereditary, so to speak, yeah? It's not something that he actually worked on, what the Chochem did. The Chochem is somebody who built himself up to be a Chochem, and nobody else can reach his his point, his Darga. But she ain't Melech, anybody can be a Melech. Melech Kodem Kohen Godel, good to see you back. A Melech is before Kohen Godel. Wow, that's a big Chiddush, that's a Chiddush. A Melech is before Kohen Godel, even though Kohen Godel is a bit more of a self-made man than the Melech, but the Melech comes first, Shenema, for that we need a Posuk, Kosuv. It says about David, who told the people to anoint Shlomo. It says, Vayomer HaMelech Lohem, the line starts with Alehem. Yeah, a few lines from the bottom, yeah, Alehem, with parentheses, with round brackets. Lahem, the Melech told them, Take with you from the slaves of your master. Now, David was talking there to the Kohen and the Novi, and he said, take from the, from the people of your master, who is the master himself, the Melech. So you see the Melech at the end of the day is the master over who? The Novi and the Mel and the Kohen Godol. So although Kohen Godol may be greater, but Lemaisa, the Kohen Godol, politically speaking, you know, in a way that's in the way of order of the hierarchy of the nation, government speaking, then the, Mel the Melech is first. Kohen Godel Kodem Lanovi. There are two people in jail. Two people need help. Two people stand in the bank. Kohen Godel Lanovi stand in the queue to the bank. Yeah. Kohen Godel is before the Novi. How do you know? Shenemal. 
The very, very, very same event of Shlomo being anointed. It says first Sodok is mentioned, Sodok was a Koyen, God all, and then Noson Anovi. He Sodok Lenoson. He said Sodok is mentioned before Noson for a reason. That's not a typo, it's a Tanakh. So the Koyen goes, the Koyen Godol is before the Novi, as much as we care about the Novi. Now the Oimer, another posuk to prove that. Shmana Yoshua Koyen Godol, Atzo Echo. The posuk addresses Yoshua Koyen Godol and then says, You and your friend, you are number one, and your friends. Who are the friends of Yeshua the Kohen Godol? Yochel Odiotesoyu. Maybe Yeshua is mentioned because the friends were regular folks. Who was a nice, you know, public figure hanging around with the guys. So it says you, the Kohen Godol, you are before your friends. No, no, no. That's not the story. Talmud Loimal ki anche Moifes Hema. There were people of Moifes. What's Moifes like? A miracle, a Moifes, Ben Moifes a Novi. Who is the person who works miracles? A person who is a Baal Moifes, a Novi. Shenema, it says in it, all psukim here. Venos on Alecha, ois oi Moifes, which means if you have a Kohen Godol and you have a Novi, Kohen Godol goes before the Novi because why? Because we see that Yeshua Kohen Godol is mentioned before his friends the Nevim. He was hanging around with the nice, with the good people, the Nevim. And the Torah says, you and then the Nevim. The Tesis Rush asks the question, why do we need two proofs? We already said that the Kohen Godot Sodok was before Noson. So why do you say again about Yoshua, right? So then he answers a brilliant answer. Yoshua Kohen Godot was in the times of the second Beis Amikdash. He was not Meshuach Mishcha. What was he? He was just with Rubeb Godim. The Nosan Anovi and Sodok Koyen. Sodok Koyen had the Shem and Mishcha. Whoa, of course he goes first. But maybe Merubeb Godim is not such great shakes. That's only the second pasuk from the second base of Mikdash to tell me that even if the coin is just Merubeb Godim, he still takes precedence over the Novi. I would continue a little bit, but maybe we'll leave that for, ooh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, we are, we are behind, we're behind, guys. Uh, okay, but we'll finish for today. Have a good day. We'll have to, after Shavuos, oh, see you after Shavuos, Rantosh Have a great day, great week. Thank you. Kabbalah Sator Be'avo.